if you have T-Mobile 5G home internet and you have their gateway and you want to turn off the Wi-Fi or split the Wi-Fi up between 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, you might not know how to do that. So I'm going to cover that here in this video. And now this is a special hack that T-Mobile does not want you to know about for turning off the Wi-Fi. I don't know why they're so protective of turning it off, but they are. So I will go through a backdoor method to get it turned off. But first, I'm going to say this is the Sagemcom gateway, which is the latest and greatest one, or at least the latest one. Um, and it came out in August of 2022. It looks very similar to the Arcadian KVD21 gateway. The way you can tell is on the back side of it on the sticker. This one under model says fast 5688W. The Arcadian one for the model says KVD21. So this is specifically for the Sagemcom. I have another video out there for the Arcadian one. And the Nokia one actually allows you to turn it off in the web interface, uh, at least uh, today. I wouldn't be surprised if they update the web interface to block that from you. If you log in to the web um, interface for these ones, it really doesn't give you hardly any options or anything to change. It's very much muted and they want you to do everything in the T-Mobile Home Internet app. So I'll pull that up and I'll show that to you real fast, but then we'll get into how do you fully turn off the Wi-Fi. Okay, so I'm on my phone now. I'm connected to the Wi-Fi to the Sagemcon unit. Just to show you real fast, I'm going to open up this app called the Analita app. And you can see here that under this T-Mobile 1C61, it has both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz listed there. And that means that it's acting as a Wi-Fi 6 signal that uh, combines those two under the same SSID, so that, that same T-Mobile dash 1C61. And then your device is supposed to uh, pick whichever band is best. So there should be like a handshake going on between your device and that. It doesn't always work clearly and sometimes people want them to be on separate um, channels anyways. They want to actually have some devices on 2.4 and some on 5. I'll show you how to split that up fairly easily with the T-Mobile Home Internet. It doesn't take anything uh, fancy here. So to do that, use uh, the T-Mobile Home Internet app, not the regular T-Mobile app. All right, so if I open up the app, you can see here that um, on the bottom there's this network tab. And in here, it has that Wi-Fi network. So if I click into there and I go down here to the frequency band, it says automatic as the default. If you select 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz, then it will only be that one um, band. So I can, for example, click 5 gigahertz and then I hit save and now it will turn off the 2.4 gigahertz band on there. But then if you were to go in there and try to delete this um, 5 gigahertz one, it will say, hey, you can't delete your only Wi-Fi signal. So you're always going to have Wi-Fi on, but you could split it up. Now I'm not going to hit save because it makes you wait like two minutes for this thing um, to restart in order for it to set. But what I'll say is if you left it um, at the 5 gigahertz, you could then come back into this main page here. Then you could come in here and add a new one and you could call it you know whatever you wanted to and you know have whatever password you wanted and then under this frequency band you could select the 2.4 gigahertz and then you'd have two different uh, Wi-Fi names out there one would be a 2.4 and one would be a 5 gigahertz signal so that's how you could get two separate names for your 2.4 and 5 if you wanted that alright but if you actually want to turn the Wi-Fi all the way off T-Mobile does not let you do that on their app or on the web interface for this Sagemcom, but I found a way around it. Now, I must give credit actually to one of my viewers that reached out and worked um, and actually provided uh, this code to make it work. I worked with him in the past on the Arcadian one, and I noticed that the previous script that was created for the Arcadian almost worked with the Sagemcom, but actually didn't all the way. It would reboot it, but it wouldn't turn off the Wi-Fi. And so um, my uh, great viewer there helped me out and fixed that code. And so now that's what I'm going to share with you. And I'm going to go through and show you how to set it up, but it is truly easy. You should not be uh, too worried about it. This is really only for Windows users, though. 
if you're a Mac, um, you'll have to figure it out on your own. Uh, I actually don't uh, don't know how to make it work there with the terminal there in Mac OS. So let's get into that. But before I do, I do want to say this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. I do appreciate you guys tuning in. If this video is helpful, consider giving the thumbs up button down below, and then consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy it. And always hit that bell icon, that way you get notified of new content that comes out every week. So let's hop into my computer and show you how to do this. Okay, so the first thing to know is down in this YouTube video description is a link to a Pastebin site. When you click that, that will bring you to this page here. And this is the code that we're going to use to actually change it. Now, don't get too scared just yet. This is very simple and easy. It's going to be a download and um, you know, click to open. There's a couple steps in there, but you don't need to know any knowledge about coding to make this work. You can just follow these instructions. So when you get there, if you click the download button, it's just going to download this text file to your downloads folder. I also like to actually just right click and click save link as and then that gives me the ability here to actually save it um, directly to the folder that I want to do, which is this folder here. And I obviously, I've already done this, so um, I'm not going to hit save, but that will save it here to this folder. If you were to open it, you can just double click it and it's a text file and you'll just see what it is here um, that we're implementing. But we have to make some changes to it. Now... A couple things here if you do not see the dot txt extension at the end of it that means you have ex um, extensions turned off which might happen by default on windows this is windows 11 now so its settings are a little bit different than, than the windows 10 but you go in here in windows 11 i click the view i click the show and then i make sure that the file name extensions are shown and um, in Windows 10, there's a very similar window. I think it's a view, and then there's um, a checkbox that you can check for show file name extensions. So you'll need to have that. Now, the one thing I do just to give myself a, a copy of it is I make a copy of it and repaste it in the same place. And then I go in here and I change the end. Now, you can rename this if you want to to some other name. But I'm going to keep it the same name and just leave it as a .ps1. When I do that, it's going to give me a warning that says, hey, do you want to change that? And the answer is yes. And th this makes it now a script file that you can run with Windows PowerShell. If you've never done that before, it actually might not work um, just yet. All right, so if you've never run that before, I'm going to have to show you a... Um, thing to allow your Windows PowerShell to actually run this script since it's not a you know official verified script PowerShell might block it from running at um, you know because they think it's malware or a virus or whatnot so to get around that um, I guess you have to kind of trust me um, this is the same steps on Windows 10 as it he is here on Windows 11 you need to open Windows PowerShell as a administrator you cannot open it as a non-admin otherwise you'll get an error and you say yes I want it to open as admin and now you copy and paste this text that I have also put in the um, in the description box down below and it's the set execution policy so what this is saying is allow it to execute scripts that are not remote signed so this takes away um, the requirement for the script to be this signed verified script so um, hit enter on that and it's gonna say hey are you sure you want to do this and we're gonna hit the Y for yes we do want to allow it and now it's going to be set and now uh, from now on out you don't have to do this again this is kind of like just updating the settings of your Windows PowerShell okay so now you can right click this file and click run with PowerShell and it's going to come up here as this blue window. And now obviously you, your computer does need to be hooked up um, either by Wi-Fi or Ethernet to the gateway itself. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to open up my phone and show you um, what this app actually shows me. Alright, so 
on this app, you can see here that we have the T-Mobile at the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. I'm going to go in here to my computer, and I am going to uh, type in the password. Now, the password is on the back of the gateway itself, and there's a sticker. You want to make sure you use the login password by the admin, not the Wi-Fi password. Now, I actually modified mine so that it is shorter and easier. But once you type that in, now you have um, a couple options, six or seven, however you count them, for what you want to do. So you can turn off just the 2.4 or just the 5 um, gigahertz Wi-Fi. You can reboot the gateway, and you can download the config file to verify changes. Now, I think it automatically downloads the config file after it makes a successful change there back to the folder that the script is in. So... Let's say I want to turn off the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I'm going to hit 1 and then enter. And now it's saying it turns it off and return the menu. And if you noticed here, it actually saved a config.txt file. So I can double click that and show you what it is. It's a little hard to read because of formatting. But what this is showing you is what the settings are. Okay, once you do that, you do have to wait seemingly like 30 seconds, maybe a minute for it to... Um, kind of like reset I'm not sure what it what it does there but and it does kick off my computer off the Wi-Fi even though I left on the 5 gigahertz band and then if you look here in the um, config file that it sent out you can see um, you know, what it's saying is the 2.4 gigahertz is saying is the radio enabled basically is that 2.4 gigahertz turned on and the answer here says false before it said true um, so this means that it's turned off and then it has like what mode is it in it's in automatic mode it has airtime fairness is on the channel bandwidth is auto um, the channel number itself is auto transmission power is 100% um, the WMM is enabled blah 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 all that kind of stuff and it goes on and on and there's another one over here that it would start with a 5 gigahertz one it has the names the uh, password there okay so now here's our five gigahertz enabled and you can see it says true so this means that the five gigahertz is still on i'm obviously connected to it through my computer but you can go back in here and we can rerun this uh, powershell i already have it open still here and so if i were to just make another selection of turning off the five gigahertz wi-fi that would turn off both of them and then my computer would be booted off i wouldn't be able to connect to it but then I could um, go in there. So let me just do that so that it shows um, how to do that. I'm not, oh, sorry, not, not reboot. I want to turn off the 5, which is a 3. Hit Enter. And now it's turning that off. So now my computer is going to be kicked off of the Wi-Fi altogether. But I'll hook my phone up to it by Ethernet cable just so that we can plug it in and see here what it does. But I'll show you that the 5 gigahertz does indeed get turned off. Okay, so now it's been about 30 seconds, and now you can see on my app it no longer shows the T-Mobile SSID as something that's out there and able to be um, selected, and that's because it's turned off. My computer has also fallen off that network and doesn't find it either. So the Wi-Fi is now turned off on this gateway. Uh, you can still hook up an Ethernet cable to it, and you'll still have internet. And if you, own, you have your own router, for example, you can plug it in, and the internet will still work. It's just the Wi-Fi uh, signal that's turned off, not the internet itself. So uh, that's another point to make is some people think if you turn off Wi-Fi, it somehow turns it into a modem, and it doesn't have a firewall or stuff like that. That is not the case. All this does is prevent a wireless device from connecting to it. It doesn't change any of the settings as far as firewall, port forwarding, any of that kind of stuff. All that stuff is still very much the same, which means very much restricted on T-Mobile. Uh, you cannot turn this device into a, a modem. You can't have pass-through. You can't have any of that port forwarding stuff set up directly through there. Um, there are some other options to get some of that stuff, but I won't cover that in this video today. So... Hopefully that helps some of you guys out. I do, again, want to have a big thanks to my fan that has really helped out and been critical to um, get this stuff to work. So 
Um, without that, I wouldn't have a video like this to share with you guys. And if you have any comments or uh, suggestions or things that you have found out that help out with T-Mobile Home Internet, feel free to put them in the comments down below and then keep watching. Thanks.